from Paris, France, and I have to clarify that because we are in Texas. Uh, Tom, how are you doing today? Pretty good. Hey, Alberto. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Um, glad to be here for another uh, edition of the Austin User Group. Hope everyone's ready to dive into this uh, this topic. Max for Live has been something I've uh, been kind of trying to learn for a long, long time, you know, and, and dabbled with. I think everyone's kind of touched it from from uh, you know here and there. So I think this is going to be interesting to a lot of people. I know a lot of people I know um, were really curious about this. So yeah, and our guest today has a really interesting approach. He's got a lot of experience, not only on the hardware side. Uh, he's got experience uh, and on the software side with Max, and he's got a, a, an interesting way to demystify the API for us today. So without further ado, I want to introduce Pierre, uh, fellow certified trainer. How are you today? Yeah, I'm good. Hi, everybody. Excuse my, excuse my French. I'm, I'm French, you, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we all appreciate you being here today. Um, I think we'll just uh, hand off the uh, Zoom to you and... Um, <laughs> Did you Maybe. want to go around the room and, and kind of talk to people first and see, you know, say who yeah. they are? And uh, let's let's do that just really quick. Yeah. Um, so first off, I'm Tom Carlisle. I'm a certified trainer here in Austin. I've been in Austin all my life um, and I've uh, been do, doing user groups. We're really happy to get this uh, virtual group back online and, ha you know, interested in all the new faces and people we're meeting. Um, so just kind of say who you are and maybe say if you've worked with Max for Live and you're about, you know, kind of how, you know, what you've done with Max for Live maybe or just how you use Live. Um, let's go over to, um, Mark Skaggs next. Hi, I'm Mark. Uh, I just use Max for live. Well, actually, I don't use Max for live, but I use live for my own personal projects. Um, I, most of the time I spend my uh, days making uh, games. So this is my very super strong, expensive hobby. Hey, same here. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Hey Richard, how's it going? Uh, we're, we're just going around the we're just going around the room uh, introducing ourselves and kind of talking about like if we've dabbled with Max for Live or not. Richard, you want to go next? Oh yeah, hey, I'm uh, Richard Hall. All my, all my buddies call me Ricky. I'm a I teach electronic music at Texas State University. I've been using Live for years. I am very scared of Max. I've kind of dabbled a little bit, but uh, I want to know more. So I'm real excited about seeing. I can only stay probably for an hour or so, but I wanted to try and catch the first part. So. I'm excited to see what, see what I'm going to learn. Awesome. All right, Chip, you're next. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm new here. I am a, a software developer and a music producer here in the Austin area. Uh, I do use um, Ableton, but I'm not really familiar with live at all. Other than I know, you know, I have some instruments that are built on it, but I don't really know how it works. Cool. Carlos. Carlos may not. You there, how about we go to Edward next? Hey, uh, yeah, I've been using Ableton for a number of years. Uh, past couple of years, been teaching myself Max MSP, and then, of course, by extension, that led to Max for Live. Uh, been messing around with that for probably, I don't know, two, three years now, um, off and on. And yeah, based in Austin, not in Austin right now, traveling for work, but uh, yeah, normally in Austin. Where are you connecting from today, Edward? <laughs> Hawaii. Oh, man. You poor, Christ. poor. <laughs> eh, it's kind of weird, man. The COVID restrictions are, uh, yeah, it's a little, it's weird mm. being did in you have to? Did you have to quarantine for a while before just being in the general population? No, because they have a, there's exemptions if you get tested 72 hours before you depart. Mm. Um, mm. But it's still... Yeah, it's kind of weird to be on beaches with people in masks. It's, yeah, it's weird, man. Really quick, uh, Alberto, before you go, I yeah. wanted to also add to everyone, just so they know that uh, Pierre is the author of the Smooth Automator tool, which allows you to jump between the macro variations in uh, the new Live 11. So that's definitely something that caught my attention. And um, so I just wanted to throw it out there too, in case anyone's not familiar with that. Go ahead, Alberto. Yeah, hey, I'm uh, Alberto. Uh, I'm an Austin certified, uh, Ableton certified trainer in Austin. I'm originally from South Texas, and I grew up uh, uh, in Mexico. Uh, I'm really excited to learn from Pierre today because, uh, again, I've used a few of his devices. 
Uh, like Tom, I've taken dives into Max for Live. I've built some devices following some instructions, but I really uh, always want to demystify and understand it better. Uh, so I want to uh, see how uh, Pierre's take on presenting on it from his level, because he's definitely uh, mastered it, but I know that he can explain it at any level and, and, and break it down for even somebody without a lot of experience <laughs> to understand it. Uh, I also see a, a few new people coming in. Al, uh, we're just going around introducing ourselves and uh, sharing our Max experience or Max for Live experience. Can you hear us, Al? Looks like he's getting his audio set up. Okay, cool. Did we get everybody, Tom? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. As always, y'all, if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat and we'll uh, uh, pass them on to Pierre as, as he's presenting and we can talk about his topic after. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, we have a participation motivation, right, Tom? Uh, yeah, I'm tracking. Uh, we have we usually we do a wheel of names at some point during the uh, group. So I'm tracking now. I'm writing down everyone's name and we'll do a drawing. So um you know, if you participate in, and ask questions and stuff like that, you'll get added to, to the wheel. So take it away, Pierre. Yeah. Uh, so hello, everybody. Uh, well, first, I'm French. I've, I don't practice English that much lately, uh, spe especially since uh, the, the, the COVID crisis. So I'm stuck in France. <laughs> but uh, I hope you'll understand what I say. So uh, yeah, I've been a musician for some time. Uh, for I've been playing music for since I, I was a kid. I released some stuff on the Ed Banger li label for those who know it. It's home of uh, Justice and uh, other art French artists. And uh, so that was like 15 years ago. And then, uh, well, I've been using Ableton for since 2003, 2004. And um, I became certified, a certified trainer in uh, 2016. And since then, I've mostly done uh, training and uh, designing devices and building hardware and uh, doing some consulting for artists and like using my my own artist background and my knowledge of life to help other people. So that's what I've been doing a lot. And that, this way I came to, well, I have one, one thing I have to say as well is that I've done some studies, I uh, studied engineering and a bit of software development and stuff before I became an artist. So maybe that explains why I'm interested in, in this, this whole field, you know. And um, so, yeah, I don't know how it happens, but uh, when when I started using Live with my band, uh, we, we used the, the looper, you know, Live's looper. And one thing that was missing is the visual feedback, you know, that uh, I, I, I couldn't, I, I wanted my guitar player to record his own loops. And it, it wasn't looking at my screen. And I said, okay, that's, that, there's a problem there. You can't record your loops with the looper and blah, blah. So, um, that was like 10 years ago and i said that the most, we must do something about it and then after i became certified uh, i met another artist through my consulting uh, uh, activities and she, she was playing on stage doing some live looping with the looper and having the same problem you know, she was uh, playing in, in front of an, uh, an audience of like 10,000 people uh, the computer was on the stage of, on the side of the stage and she was pressing a button like blindly, you know, and hoping that the, the looper started recording. And I said, okay, I, we, we must do something about it. So uh, I used my own engineering background to create uh, a device. I don't know if I've got one actually. Uh, yeah, that's one. That's, I'm sorry, I'm back. That's what the, my first hardware device, it's called State of the Loop. And it's, so it's a, a pedal loop, uh, a, a pedal board, a MIDI pedal board that connects to live through a Max, Max for Live device. And um, so that was how I, I started using Max for Live. You know, I had this idea in, in mind. I knew it was possible to do it. I didn't know how, know how long or how, even how to do it, but 
Um, and that's my my that's uh, my point is that most of the time when you when you want to 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 discover Maxwell Live, the best way to do it is to have a need for it. Because if you're just like okay, I'm going to learn Max, and you don't have uh, an incentive, something that motivates you, it's quite hard. But when you have an idea, or when you have something is missing in life, and you want to to achieve it, not maybe not something as complicated as a, a hardware device, or but sometimes it can be really simple, uh, a simple need, like I don't know, a button that will put all the volumes to zero, to zero dB, something very simple. That's in, uh, with Ableton without Max for Life. It's quite complicated to 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 build a button like this. I don't know if it's even possible, but with Max for Life you can do that, and that's the kind of thing, simple thing that can take uh, take you to 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 learn Max for Life and discover that it's not that complicated. So uh, I think the, the best way to show to show you how not complicated it is is to build a, a small device. Um, th there's one thing, maybe you've already uh, felt it, but that's missing in live is the, to, the concerning the, the tempo, the BPM. You, when you want to adjust it in live, you can use a, a knob to, to change the tempo, but sometimes you'd like to just press one button and increase the BPM by one, or decrease it by one, just one point. And uh, that's something that you, you, you just can't do in, in live. Or maybe you could do it like renaming scenes, but that won't be like, um, you, you won't subtract one, you just create a temp, you have to have one scene for each BPM. So that makes things complicated. Anyway, so the, 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 the easiest, way, easiest way is to use Max for Live. And that's what Max for Live is for, actually. It's to, all these little things that life doesn't do uh, on its own, you can do. You can do them with Max for Live most of the time, and that's that's why Ableton is quite smart in uh, using Max for Live because they say, okay, we're doing the the best software possible, but we know we can't fulfill all the needs of everybody. So we give you a tool that for if you want to do something that's not possible, we 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 can do it for you. You, you can build it yourself i mean so uh i'm going to to show you how the this example works and maybe if you have question after after that uh i could we, we could have a chat so i'm going to share my screen first okay is it fine that yeah, looks good yeah and you 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 can see now a, a french version of uh, of live with uh, son, battery, instrument, effet audio, effet midi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're, we're going to, 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 to go into the, the Max for Live uh, um, category. And one point I wanted to say uh, before diving into it is, um, I don't know if some of you, most of you, I guess, have uh, Live 11. And one move that was, uh, that I started in Max 11, in Live 11, I mean, is that some of the um, Max for Live devices have made their way into the audio effects folder. Like if you go to modulators, you've got LFO, Shaper, Envelope Follower. All these are Max for Live devices. Before, uh, until Live 11, they, they were in, in the Max for Live folder, but now they've moved here in the instruments. We have the drum synth that are also Max for Live devices. And that's something that I believe we're going to see more and more in the future is Max for Live making its way into live uh, for real. And one thing that, that uh, make it, makes it more um, concrete is that, uh, you know, that Ableton bought uh, Cycling 74 in, I think it was just before Live 10. So actually, Max for Live is no really a part of Ableton. It's going to, to be more and more linked. So I encourage you to, 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 to discover it. And that's what I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm an evangelist of Max for Life. So I'm trying to spread the good word and make people use it. So um, to start, uh, you know, there are three categories in Max for Life. It's the audio effect, the instrument, the instrument and the MIDI effect, just like in live, we've got the instruments, 
the audio effects and the MIDI effects. There's um, well, the, the, the differences between the three are the input and output. It's quite obvious, but I, I sometimes I like to say it's like the, the MIDI effects are uh, MIDI input, MIDI output. Instruments have MIDI input, audio output, and the audio effects have audio input, audio output. That's m what makes them different. But uh, in Max for Life, the, the, we have these categories. But actually, uh, you can use, you can turn uh, an audio effect into an instrument by just adding a MIDI input into a, a device. So I'm going to start with um, the default uh, Max audio effect. I'm, I'm taking a, a Max audio effect because you can put it on any track. You can put it on a MIDI track or, or an, uh, an audio track. If if I create uh, a MIDI effect, I can put it only on MIDI tracks. I, I won't be able to put it on the master or on river on on return tracks. So uh, I'm, I'm starting with a, a max audio effect that I'm going to drag on the track. And what you're seeing here is uh, the default max audio effect, which has two boxes. I'm going to to to, do, to open Max later, but what, what you're seeing here is the, the objects, the, the Max for Live object, uh, which are the audio in object. Plugin is audio in, plug out is audio out. And the, the, those two objects are linked together with these little wires. And uh, that means that the audio is going through the device. There's nothing, no effect, no the, the, the audio comes in the plugin and goes out of the plugout and you can put it on any device. It's going to be just a, a bypass kind of bypass effect. So um, this little icon here is um, to open another program, which is Max, and that allows you to, to edit the device and create more like, objects and effects or whatever. But so you, you can, Max for Life can be used to create MIDI effects, instruments, audio effects, like we are saying, like the same uh, that we have, uh, same kind of effect that we have in live. But one thing it can do that's different from the other audio or instrument effect that it can access the API of live. For those who are not into computer or software programming or whatever, API is the API, you can see it as a door, a kind of back door to the program itself. So you can, uh, Ableton allows you, allows us to, to do certain things, to access certain parameters uh, with the API. And that's what the, um, you know, all the, the media, the controllers, the control surfaces, they, they use the same, they use the API to access all the, when you if you have push, you know you'll not push uh, the, the hardware device by by Ableton. What it does is just access live through the API, and Max for Live in, is another way to use to access the API and the, the, the all the functions, all the parameters uh, that push can access or any control surface can access are exactly the same than Max for Live. And the idea was is going to be to to access those parameters, try to to know the way to find the, the, the BPM, for example, or for the, the third scene, the, 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 the second track of, of the of the set or the device and there's something you know like it's the, the the idea is to get the path to some part of the of the the software. And so that's what I'm going to, to show you with this simple example. So this path is accessed through the live with the live object model. It's called the L L O M, and you know this. Um, I don't know if some of you have already seen this graph, but it explains all the structure of live, of the of a live set. I mean, so the the the, the top uh, part is the song, that's the live set, and a, a song contains tracks, scenes. Q points, that's the markers in the arrangement. And then a track contains devices. The mixer device is the volume, the, the mute button, all the, you know, this, this part of life, that's the mixer device. 
So each each track has a mixer device. Um, then you have clip slots. Um, not all, not all the tracks have clip slots. For example, the master track doesn't have clip slots, or the return tracks they don't have clip slots. Clip slots. Clip slots is somewhere where you can put a clip and you don't necessarily have a clip on it. It can be just a, a clip slot with a, a stop button, or you can remove the stop button, then this clip slot doesn't have anything on it. It's just an empty um, an empty slot. So um, I'm not going to, to, to go through all the um, all the class that's called classes, you know, the all all those the parts of life of a live set. But that's the idea. And the idea will be to for example, I want to to change the the filter of a device that is on the second track and the filter is the third device. So I can, I'm going to have to find a way to access the, the filter. So it's going to be uh, a path that's going to be a second track, third device, parameter num number uh, four to, 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 to get the filter. And then I will be able to change the, the filter value with, um, with max for life okay? So, my example will be this time to um, to create. So well, I was I was explaining a device that will change the BPM by plus and minus one. So firstly, I'm going to open the the device to be able to edit it. So that opens Max for Live, and uh, so you you see the two objects I was speaking about, the plugin plugouts that are still here, and then we've got all this space to create our or device using object. There are uh, not that many different objects in in uh, in Max for Live. The main one is this one, and uh, the thing that you have to that, that's only one object, but it can be anything. You just you you can you, you type the um, the function you want it to be performed. For example, if I type plus in it. You know, it says uh, add two numbers and output the result. So I'm going to do that. And on the top, you have two slots that will allow you to feed some uh, messages. And th the output will be at the bottom. And that's always the way it works. You, you feed messages from top to, to bottom. So the messages are, you can, uh, you can for example, use them um, with this box here that's a message box so if i type for example three in it and i take the output of the tree put it in the plus create another message with five put it in the second uh, that's going to be the um, the operand log. Uh, this this is going to perform three plus five and i'm going to use another message this time i'll Put it in uh, as um, some to, to display the result, and I'm going to click on five, click on three, and that's going to perform the, the the operation. Okay, so these these objects do a function. These ones just send messages. Okay, the um, the the wire is gray uh, because it 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 takes uh, values you know this when you this is a different um, kind of wire when it's, it's stripped like this it's uh, audio signal okay so this is a message this is a signal okay so um, you know it, it's always difficult to explain something about max for live and uh, to, to people I, I'm not sure if you well I, I know that some of you don't know anything about max for life about Max, and it's the point of this this thing is not to to explain Max because it's very wide, but uh, it's more about the API and to to show you how to 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 to, to access the different parameters. So I'm not going to spend too much time on how this works and all the different uh, functions that you have, but um, I'm going to show you how the the API works. So as I was saying, um, for example, if I want to find the tempo, I change the tempo in live, I've got to 
create to, to find the, the ID, the ID number of the tempo. To do that, there's an object. So I'm going to create an object which is called live.path. And this object, when you feed in, when you feed it uh, a path, for example, uh, the the uh, force parameter of the second device of the first track or something like that, it's going to, to spit an ID number that you can use to, uh, to make some actions. So, for example, uh, what I want to do is to, find, to change the tempo. So I've got to find where the, where, where, how to access the, the tempo. The tempo belongs to the song. So if I click on song here, this takes me to all the parameters and all the functions that belong to a song. So, for example, in a song, you have, I was, as I was saying, the cue point return tracks, that's the children. And then later on, you have all the properties. So there are lots of them. You can, uh, for example, you, you, well, there, there are too many to, 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 to list them all, but um, among all this proper to, so for example, yeah, this one is interesting, is playing. Uh, if I want to know if live is playing, if the play button is uh, lit in uh, green, I am going to, to check the, this uh, property. Or um, if I go down, there's the temple of follower enabled and there should be a, a st, uh, what is it, tempo. That's the current tempo of the live set in BPM. So that's what I'm looking for, the, the tempo. And there are three, thing, three things I can do with it, is get it. So get it is to ask for, for the value, set it, so change the value, and observe it. Observe is going to, the, the, that's another object that's going to always look for the value of the tempo. So first, I'm going to do something easy is just to get the value of the tempo. So th as I was saying, the tempo is a property of the live set. So I've got to find to, to get the, the ID number of the live set. I hope this is clear. <laughs> I'm not uh, confusing you too much. So um, here I've got my life path object. And I'm going to feed it a path live set, which is the syntax for uh, the, the, the live set. So I'm going to create uh, a message box to show when I click on path live set, I'm going to, 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 to get an ID number. So if I click on it, it says ID one. So yeah, whenever I'm going to feed an object ID one, it's going to know that I'm talking about the, the live set. Okay. So I'm going to find, to feed ID one into another object, which is called live dot object. And this object is, can be anything in life. Okay. It can be a parameter. It can be a button. It can be uh, the tempo. It can be a scene. It can be, it's something quite uh, abstract and it becomes something real as soon as you put, uh, you give it uh, an ID number. So I'm going to feed this live object, the, this ID one. So I'm going to click it. And now the live dot object is um, the live set. Okay. And if I say, uh, for example, um, I'm going to create another message, which is get tempo. And I'm going to see when I click on get tempo, it says tempo 127. Okay. So this object now it is the, the, the tempo. If I say, um, well, no, this object is the live set and I can ask any, um, any property that belongs to this live set. For example, we, we saw is playing. If, if I create an object, uh, a property which is is playing, get is playing into the live object. Yeah, I didn't type it correctly. 
is playing is playing zero. If I launch live and ask again, and no, it's, it says it's playing one. Okay, so you can use this object can can be used to to see anything that belongs to the live set. To the a lot of properties will be in this area. You know, or you can ask, in for example, how many tracks in it. So if I say get tracks, I'm going to have. Um, I'm going to, maybe I'm going to, to zoom. Sorry, to zoom a little bit. Okay, so you can see better. So uh, if I ask get tracks, it spits out four ID numbers, which corresponds to the four tracks I have in my set. So I can tell that ID twenty is the the ID number of the first track. Okay. So I hope you get the the picture. Uh, now I'm going to uh, to make this uh, button to change the BPM by plus and minus one. So for that, I'm going to, uh, so uh, instead of getting the tempo, the idea will be to set it. So I'm going to create a message which is set tempo. And for example, I'm going to set it to 96 BPM. So for now, I'm not clicking it, I'm just showing you but the tempo is 127. If I take the output of set of the set tempo, plug in into the live output and click on it, now my BPM is 96. Okay. So if um, I can use now this set tempo to, to change the tempo of life, I'm going to remove all the boxes that are not used. To make things clearer, okay. So um, um, the first thing to do will be uh, to create an object that allows me to um, change the tempo instead of typing ninety six or whatever. I, I'm going to create a knob to change the tempo. So I use uh, the, in this category. I have um, um, how do you call that? objects that look like a uh, ableton like you've got a dial that's similar to what the dials you have in, uh, in live and i'm going to enter it to, to to connect it to this box and change here use uh, dollar one to uh, hold on no, that's correct uh, when you sorry, when you write uh, set tempo dollar one, the dollar one is going to be replaced by whatever value is uh, input in the box. So when I change this BPM, you know it changes the BPM here. So uh, next we're going to uh, use uh, another object which which is called increment and decrement. So the the, the the sorry, the exact uh, name is ink deck, you know, and it increments and decrements a value. Okay, I'm going to use that. And if I put it here and I click on the button, that's going let me close this. Um, it's happening. Now I've got to fill it a value first. And then, so when I'm clicking up, it changes uh, the BPM by one. And when I'm clicking here, it changes it, it decreases it by one. And um, instead of clicking on the device, which I can't do in, in live, I'm going to create a, a button, which is called in the, I, I feel like I'm going maybe too much in depth. No, is it, is it okay? Oh, we're doing good. I, uh, we're having some aha moments and, and understanding. Okay, cool. So I, I, I'm going to follow my to 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 to, to finish my example. And no, it's it, all good. It, it, yeah. it won't be too long now. So I'm I'm going to create two two messages, which will be ink and deck, that I'm going to feed into that specific to this ink deck um, object. You know, like if you. If you send it a message that's called ink, it increments the BPM. 
and Beck decrements it. And then um, I'm going to create two buttons that that this will be the buttons that will appear in life. Okay, all this is like under the hood, you know, like in the device. But then these two buttons, I want them to to be on the device itself. So I'm going to select them and add to presentation. The presentation is actually what you're say what what you're seeing in the in Ableton in life. Um, so if I go to presentation mode. I can take those two buttons and I've got to find uh, where is my start point. Well, okay, I'm, I'm always confused with this this view, so I'm going to do a little trick without explaining explaining it. I open in presentation and um, go. Oh, so to to switch from presentation to uh, patching mode is this button. And now I have my two buttons. This one, I'm going to put a comment, which will be ink or plus. And another comment, which will be minus. I hope it's this way. And then I've got, I'm going to save my device. I'm going to call it a tempo ink deck, save. And maybe you see in the background, my device has changed. No, uh, I can see it's it's great because I'm still editing it. But as soon as I will close it, it's going to be, I'm going to have these two buttons and to have this device and th those two buttons will be MIDI mappable. Or, so I can use it in, uh, with a, a, a MIDI control. So uh, let me finish that first because that's um, w w one problem is that uh, I'm doing plus and minus, but I'm doing plus and minus to, uh, I don't even know what the, the current tempo is. When I'm launching live, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to set the tempo, but I don't have uh, something to to increment, you know? So I'm, uh, I need to observe the, the current tempo to be able to, to increment and decrement it. So that's going to be another uh, object, which is called Live. Dot observer. Now, if if I go back to my uh, reference guide, I hope it's going to open on the. No, I don't have the the BPM. So uh, you, you remember on this page, I had three ways to access the parameter. It was get, set, and observe. Get and set. You do it with uh, live dot object. Observe. It's got it's got to be uh, one one object per property. So this. Uh, so I've got to observe the BPM. The BPM belongs to my live set. So it's got to be the, the it's going to be the same path, the the, uh, the one that corresponds to ID one. And uh, what I want to observe is the the tempo. So I'm going to create. To, to tell the live observer, I'm, I want to observe the property, property tempo. I connect it to the live observer. I click on it to, 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 pr to print it. And then I'm going to put a message box to see that when I'm changing the BPM in live, no, this changes automatically. As soon as I change the value, the, the, the live observer is always looking at the tempo. So I can retrieve the, the tempo at any moment uh, and send, send it to, to my index to say uh, uh, if I want to increment or decrement the value, which value is going to be incremented is the, the tempo. Okay. I'm going to remove that on the unnecessary objects. Pierre? This live this live dial doesn't is, there's no use for it anymore. Yeah, sorry. A uh, question: How would you access the decimal value? Uh, it, like if you wanted uh, to uh, increment, no, no, I think it's, if, increase if I, change it, if I change it here, it's it. I have the the decimal. The live observer is. Uh, the, so the, if you if you wanted to scroll by decimals though, if you wanted to, would would that be accessible too? Uh, you mean 
to, 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 to make a plus minus dot one or something. Correct. Yeah, that will be what well, that will be a bit. Uh, I can have the, the BPM with the decimal, and uh, then it would uh, there would be a bit of math behind it, you know, like increment one, but then divide it by ten and add the value to something like that. Interesting. You know? Okay. That's yeah. the kind of thing that uh, you have to think about in Max. You know? Very cool. Um, okay, so actually uh, we're done now. We have this box that's going to send to send the the the, the, the life the, the path to this object which is going to set the tempo this one is going to observe the tempo and send it to my index object and then we have the two buttons to to change the the tempo value there's just one thing that's a bit tricky uh, that i need to do is as soon as i'm going to close the device all the 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 path and the, the are, are reset. Uh, sorry, uh, I didn't mention something about these two objects. Is that you, you see the the ID number is fed into the rightmost um, inlet of the of each box. That's the way you do it. Like, you know when you uh, when I put the mouse, it says live dot object ID in. That's always the case with uh, live object and live observer. The ID number of the device is the rightmost rightmost inlet, and the leftmost is for the properties for the uh, functions that you want to perform. Okay, so this live path is fed to this live object that is, that's used to set the tempo, and is set to the live observer. But as soon as I close, uh, I was saying, as soon as I close the device, all these um objects forget about the id number so i've got to use another object which is called live dot this device uh, sorry i'm going to show you the the little explanation it sends a bang automatically when a max device is loaded is loaded that's what's important now it means that uh, as soon as you load uh, the device or you save it or you close it whatever it's going to send a bang which is like a, in, in max language uh, a bang is uh, an event uh, so it's going to send uh, an event to this object that's going to feed this object and this observer with the id one and there's another thing the so these two are going to know that they are supposed to to, uh, to look for the live set, but then the property tempo needs to be uh, sent to the live observer as well. So I'm going to, to connect the live de this device to the property tempo as well. See, I hope that this is clear. So as soon as I'm going to close the device, all these objects are going to know that they are supposed to address the, li the live set and uh, this one has got to watch the tempo. Okay, so I'm going to close the device, save it, and fingers crossed it will work. If I click on plus, you see the, temp the BPM is changing by one, and minus is changing by one. And if I change manually the tempo, it still worked. Yeah. Okay, so we are done with this example. I don't know if it, 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 it's hard to find something that's uh, easy to understand and that makes sense. I hope I did it. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, I think that that took me further than I've really gone, to be honest. So <laughs> um, I appreciate that. Can you put that uh, device back up on the screen, the editor mode yep. that you had? So when I open it, it's in presentation mode. That's what, that's what happens with most of the devices when you open them. It's done in a presentation mode. So if you, if you want to dive into it, you've got to click on this uh, button here, patching mode. And then you have all the, all the boxes inside it. And something else uh, I wanted to, 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 to mention is that um, you, Max for Live is uh, not uh, protected. I mean, there's no, you can use any device by anyone, open it, and copies some parts of the, the 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 code. It's not code, but the of the device. So, so it's really open and um, 
and collaborative. I don't know. Sorry. Sorry. So I have a, the question that I have is um, for the live observer, it gets the ID from the live path. Yep. And the up and down arrow, the ink deck arrows. Yeah. That actually does the plus one. Exactly. To the set te to the tempo. Yep. Exactly. So the the thing that you, you, the the this double arrow the ink deck does the plus one and minus one, but you've got to add plus one or minus one to something that exists. You know that's why I I put this live observer to have a value to add one to. You know. Otherwise, I do. I would be adding one to. I don't know what. Got it. Okay. You see my point. But it, it sends yeah, that to the property temp, the tempo, property tempo. Pro property tempo. What it does is tell the observer to to observe the property, which is which is called tempo. You know that's okay. You, okay. You, you you get it. Yeah, I keep getting I, confused. If, that if, it's look, slow control. Look, Look, instead of property tempo, I'm going to, to create another box. And I was giving you the, the I was telling you about is playing. I'm going to change tempo to is playing. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to put this box to to see what's happening. And I'm going to fold to change this so I can have. So um, as soon as I'm going to stop, stop and stop live. Uh, sorry, I didn't. No, I'm going. Okay. So no, the, the live observer is not observing the tempo anymore. It's, it's observing the is playing property. So if I start live, it says one. If I stop it, it says zero, one, zero. Okay. And if I click on property tempo, no, it's back to observing the the tempo. So you can. A live observer can can only observe one thing. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Okay. So the live observer just basically sends out the information that it's it's looking at, whether it's a temporal exactly. or it's is playing. Yeah. That plus the ink deck goes down and acts on set tempo. Okay. And what does that dollar sign, dollar one, mean again? Uh, the, the dollar one is um, to rip. Uh, the, um, it's, it's used a lot of time in uh, in Maxwell Live. It, it it can be replaced by any value. Dollar dollar one is like uh, I don't know okay. x or like a variable. Uh, replace whatever comes into this box is okay. going to replace the dollar one. Got it. We use we use it a lot to prepend messages. You know, like I could use another uh, object which is called prepend and uh, set tempo. Yeah, I, I, I think you are into software development, no? Yeah. Into, yeah. So prepend. You know what it means? It's going to. This is going to prepend the the set tempo words before anything that comes in. So. If I'm going to, to put a message to show what's being output, a, a okay. box to send numbers to it. So this is going to to send yeah. set tempo, and this is going to do exactly the same. Okay. That's another way of doing it. Okay. So I hope if I connect this. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. It's, nice. But th yeah. these these are like the really max tricks, you know, that you. You, you learn uh, after some time. Well, there's a huge community, and it's really cool. The Max, the uh, Cycling Seventy Four website is really cool. Uh, on Facebook, there are some groups for to, to share knowledge, and uh, there's a, a very nice community of people helping each other. Maxforlife.com obviously is a great resource. Probably that. Um, there are lots of uh, knowledgeable people and people that do great stuff on maxwell.com and there are lots of newbies and people so and the, the search engine is really really bad <laughs> so you if you're looking for example for a simple device like this like increment decrement tempo you can find some something that will be like over the top or 
too many buttons or and you just want a little part of it so it's nice to be able to to cut what's not necessary and uh, sometimes you you have someone doing uh, something very complex to to perform a simple action because it doesn't know all the tricks right. uh, that that's the problem okay but it's it's nice anyway it's nice to have this community Pierre, do you have any courses on max for live or any videos anywhere that people can take uh, no, uh, I, I learned Max with uh, Cadence, you know, Cadence, uh, mm -hmm. uh, online course. Uh, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I learned the, the basis of, uh, of uh, Max programming, not Max for Life, Max. But uh, okay. when, when, you, when you know Max, you're, you know, Max for Life is not very complicated. The, the difference with Max for Live is really the live object model and the API and how to find your way. But this, what, what I showed you, like this, uh, this example with the live object and live observer, and that's what, uh, once you've understood that, you you know everything more or less. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I've heard really good things about that Cadenza course. Yeah, it's it's nice. I mean, the the Max for Live course is very good. Mm. I think it's it's one of the maybe maybe not a founder but someone really implied in involved in the development of uh, Max. Yeah, that was the one with Matt Wright, wasn't it? Teaching it. Yeah, maybe. I mm -hmm. can't remember. A lot of people have recommended that. I'll put. I'll, I'll see if I can find a link for the group if anybody's interested in getting started on that Cadenza course. There's some pretty cool um, Max for Live stuff I've seen for Busy. I think as well tutorials for doing video stuff as well. Um, I think I followed one of those at loop one time and it was, it was really cool, but I just was missing, an, I was missing some of this like mo object model stuff to really get me going. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a huge, huge field. I mean, there are so many possibilities with Max. It's hard to, but well, it's easy to, to get lost. And, uh, but, uh, what I was saying at the beginning is you, you don't get lost when you have, uh, uh, a target, you know, an object, uh, an aim to do something like you want to do this device that's going to uh, to change the, the the video or blood, the lightning when you click on this button, and and that that gets you started, and that's the best way to learn it is to have something to achieve. You know? mm. But it's hard. It's hard. Some sometimes you're just in front of your computer saying, okay. What good idea can I have to, to get started? With me? Yeah, I think that it applies to making music too. what you just said, just in a way like it's. Uh, uh... Yeah. Yeah. But then and, uh, speaking about that is is like it gets in the way of making music as well. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, when I when I started doing music, I, I once wasn't using Max for Life. I was using uh, Reactor. That, that was the early, early days of Reactor. And I loved it connecting all the, these little boxes and doing my own device and stuff. And after some time, I just realized that I was avoiding making music and just having fun doing some design, but that wasn't going to lead me very far in my career. You know? So I decided to forget about it and just use already made stuff until I finally found a way to, to make it uh, to, to, to make these box connect these boxes in a professional en uh, environment. Interesting. Interesting. How does this, all this translate to your hardware work, Pierre? So, um, yeah, uh, so I, I showed you this device. Is it what you're speaking about? Yeah, the hardware. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, well, th th there are lots of ways to do to to, to do this. So this one uh, is a mixture. Because I mean. Of, uh, control surface no sorry yeah with with kb live solutions i'm noticing there's a lot of like the remote display multi-foot switch and state yeah of the loop. um yeah i did with this french artist who was well this um foot switch that i was showing has um made me kind of famous in the looper scene you know and uh, there was there's this french artist who uses uh was alone on, on stage uh, do, using eight loopers for the piano, vocals, blah, blah. And uh, he wanted to, it was the same problem. He was on, on stage without the computer and he wanted to have some visual feedback. So I created this 
Maxwell Live device that's just um, a visual feedback of the looper, you know? And the idea to, to, to make the connection with what I was explaining before, maybe I can stop sharing my screen. So uh, yeah, the, the, um, the, the idea was to, there were some, some loopers on, the, on, on some tracks of this device. So I had to find, the, say the looper was the third device on, the, on one of the tracks and uh, how to, to get the path uh, saying, okay, I want to observe the, the property of the state of the looper uh, that sits on the track number uh, three, number four, number five, number seven, and display all the change uh, colors maybe of, uh, of a page on, on Maxwell Live to reflect the state of the looper, and, et cetera. That's the kind of use. Yeah? So on something like that, the hardware would it come with a Max for Live device, like the when when you're like uh, the state of the loop, uh, or was it state of the loop uses um, Max for Live to check the state of the looper and send MIDI messages to this box through a control surface. Mm. So it's kind of a mixture of a lot of things. For, for, for the artist, it was m much more simple. It was uh, doing, uh, um, maybe I can show you how it works. It's pretty easy. Uh, and I'm not sharing my screen anymore. I know. So let's share my screen. If I find it again, it's called loop display. And it's, uh, no, it's not. Mm. I see you made it a larger display so they could see it from further away I guess on your laptop uh, yeah exactly well yeah I did that too <laughs> and, uh, most of my requests by artists are people who are far away from the computer you know mm -hmm. and they need to have some visual feedback one way or, or the other so because well mo most of the acts now don't uh, want to have the computer on stage it's on the side of the stage and they want to, to to perform whatever but not have a computer on stage so it's a, it's a big issue you know? um okay let me find this device it's actually on the Somewhere on the internet, and uh, the display. I did so many uh, variations of the. Um, the per display, the per display. Um, I found it on the, um, yeah, KB's live solutions. Yeah, yeah, the... exactly. So maybe I'm going to <laughs> to go to to the web to to, to get it uh, to look. Uh, oh, shit. Ah, here it is. So it's uh, I'm going to put a looper next to it. So uh, I'm getting delay and loop. I'm still not used to these uh, categories. I know I ended up removing my categories. I, I just realized my brain was used to thinking in alphabetical order. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, this is telling me this, this device is always watching the looper that's just before it. So if I start recording, you know, the, it changes the display. That's pretty basic, you know, that's a, um, a meter, an input meter. If I mute the track, Get, it gets grayed. Uh, if I clear the uh, get to clear, say so there's no sample. So uh, yeah, it's pretty. I wouldn't say basic, but it's the. I mean, the device is not basic. If you, if I open it, it's quite complicated. But uh, but the need the need is basic. Uh, to, to have to have a. A floating window. Uh, did, did you see it? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. For some. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can see it, and okay. that's a good philosophy in live in general for music making and Max for and Max also just starting with a purpose, right? So they can have. Uh... Yeah, exactly. 
Exactly, and that, that's the same as anything, actually. You've got to start small and your, your knowledge will grow. A little, a little trick if you're, for anyone that's interested into, into building devices like that is um, when, you, when you open a device and you have an idea, a rough idea for what you want to, to perform, there's uh, the, the, the help, um, the reference guide that I was uh, um, using is very, very well done. So you can just type whatever, like uh, increment of value and you have examples and uh, you have objects and whatever to, to help you. And if you find something that's similar to what you want to do, but not exactly, you have this uh, reference here on this, the right hand side and it says see also and you have um, objects that are similar to what you want to do, but different. And uh, that really helps to, to, to broaden your knowledge of the objects available, because there's a huge list if you want to, if you, you start to, to, to look at, the, uh, at the, all the objects that, that are available in, in, in Max, it's like endless, you know? So it's, it's impossible to know all of them, but, when you, when you have roughly an idea for of what you want to do, then you you, you can find your way. And another trick is to uh, alt click on a, on an object and it op opens the help. And so I did it on this, for example, prepend. And then you have uh, examples and you have also the seal. So it's really well done. And I mean it's. When you have an idea of doing something, then you can find your way pretty easily to, 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 to achieve it. If the idea is not too complicated. <laughs> That's really cool. I also, you know, there's a, a great community as, as much as there is an Ableton Live community. I know Max for Live has a very, very deep community. Other than the, the Max for Live website, um, do you recommend any community based places or any Discord groups that you know of, Pierre? I know that the the, the Facebook group uh, Max for Life uh, around Max for Life, I don't know its name. Uh, it's it's really nice, and that, uh, as soon as you have a problem, there's someone to help you out. And uh, it's it's nice because when it's uh, when people are starting, uh, there's the, the the answers are most of the time pretty obvious, and there's always someone that will answer you in like two minutes. Like, uh, look at this object. And uh, if there's something more complicated, then everybody is like uh, challenged, you know, and they want to, to, to find out the best solution. Uh, so it's, it's really cool. And there's, uh, there's another really cool trick to, to share uh, in, uh, in Maxwell Live is that you can copy some, so if, for example, if I select all my objects, copy them, and then I can, uh, now that the other, uh, yeah, copy compressed is going to create some kind of code, like a few lines that you can just paste on a website or on a, on, a, on Facebook or whatever. And then, when you have um, when you're on Facebook and you copy this code and you say new from new from clipboard with the code copied, that's going to create all these objects back. So you can. You you, wow. you you can exchange objects without uh, saving any device. Just copy the, the objects and uh, paste the, the text of it. Does Max for Live have, have big feature upgrades whenever they go from one version to another? I know like with Live 11, there was a lot of feature changes. Do they have big upgrades or how do, how yeah, do they yeah, handle they do. Lots of them are for um, uh, ease of use and uh, um, Patching, may, may, patching quickly, uh, quicker. You know, like if you want to, sometimes you have to to connect. Say you're building a matrix for all the clips of your live set, and you have 16 tracks, uh, 32 scenes, whatever, and you have to connect all the cables one by one. The, the, they they ma they make it easier. You know, this kind of uh, use of features plus some. Uh, lately, they, they introduced a multi-channel audio which was a really big thing, like in one cable, you can feed, I don't know, 1000 audio streams in just one cable. And that's really close to, to the audio world. I mean, it's really, Im imagine that in one cable, you can really, in one physical cable, you can really put 
1,000 audio um, audio streams, you know, doing it in in a software is as huge as doing it in in the real life, you know. The, uh, well, Alberto, we met at uh, at Loop LA, at the the Ableton event, and there was a demo about it, which was incredible. Like uh, that was shaping the, the sound of our environment. It's, it's really hard to describe because it's something we are not used to to handle. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, we had uh, Christopher Willits. I don't know if you're familiar with his work. Uh, from mm -hmm. Envelop, he was talking about uh, using uh, multi-channel audio in uh, in live, just for okay. spatial sound and stuff like that. Very interesting. Plus, all the video stuff. There's something really cool uh, as well. Is um, uh, uh, Beep. Beep is um, a modular. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't, uh, so someone showed it to you, uh, to me, uh, pretty recently. So I'm not very good at <laughs> explaining it. But basically, it's a modular environment, so you can uh, get oscillators. Okay, uh, it's going to. Yeah. Okay. So I, I didn't. Oh. Maybe I didn't. I didn't get the the, the easiest one. Mm. So you you have uh, you can have a lot of objects and. Uh, for example, an LFO that I'm going to uh, get the sign and insert it into uh, CV1. Okay, so it's a modular Whoa. environment like you would have uh, with the uh, hardware. Yeah, this looks a lot like the grid in Bitwig. I didn't even know about this. I didn't know that they had pre-canned yeah. devices like that. That's pretty cool. It's huge. It's huge. And then you can imagine that it, you can merge that with the API. So you can mm -hmm. have, for example, uh, I don't know, it's, hard to, it's always hard to, to find examples for that. But <laughs> you can uh, have the, the CV out of your granular modulate uh, parameter from the echo of mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be on the return track or whatever. Yeah? So uh, the po possibilities are huge. <laughs> Does anybody from the community have any thoughts or, or questions for uh, Pierre? I know people were, re were having some reactions to to uh, what you taught us today. Has your, has your brain melt or? I have a question. <laughs> you said earlier that um, anything that Push Two could do that it was available in Max for Live, right? Because the API has it. So, mm -hmm. like Push Two can do things like set warp markers and manipulate them, all kinds of stuff like that. You can do that in in Max for Live too. Um. Uh, so. I don't believe you can change warp markers with push. Uh, I don't think so. Oh. Um, but uh, lately in Live 11, that was some of the improvements for, for the API in, in Live 11, that you can access the warp markers. You can't change them, but you can see where they are, which is a big step to being actually able to change them. So uh, I think that's going to to make its way into the, the API, the warp markers. I see. So it's like cutting edge stuff right now, right on the edge of, of what yeah, they're exactly. releasing in the API. Exactly. Okay, thanks. I, I just wanted to say thanks. I had a comment before that every time I've looked at Max for Live, I always looked at the, the links between the, the objects as a flow control as opposed to an action taken on the object. So uh, mass, I was massively confused. Thanks you for clearing that up for me. Okay. And if I can commend you on one of your comments before, this is me being the professor, but so many people get buried in all the code and you said it's about the music. You got too much, too buried in the devices, you need to think about the music more. And I really commend you for that because some people, Max is all about the coding and it's just code, 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 hack, hack, hack. And then they don't really do any, you know, the music's a little bland. Yeah, yeah, I know. I commend you for saying that. That was great. And this was great. Um, I'm, I've still been running into some walls. So you've, you've kind of chipped away at some of the, some of the things I've been trying to get through this program. Oh, Glad to hear that. But yeah, the, this, this thing about uh, making music and programming is a fight, a constant fight. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, uh, 
I'm, I'm not making I'm not making much music lately, I must say. <laughs> but you got to pay your bills, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but I enjoy it. I mean, it's nice because I feel like I did my artist career, so to speak, in uh, when it was time to do it, and now I find it's time to to to, to geek. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. There's a there are a lot to be said to uh, contributing the tools uh, that musicians use to do cool stuff and exactly uh, like Tupac said I may not change the world but I may influence the person that does and uh, <laughs> I take a lot of pride in that as, a, as an educator too is sometimes you know you got to just pass it on and see what happens with the knowledge mm -hmm. did you ever come to Austin Pier with Ed Banger because I saw Kavinsky a few times here and uh, Justice no, comes here a I lot never came here but, uh, yeah I nearly made it to South by Southwest and we got to have you on. Well, we have to bring back South by Southwest and then have you on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, that would never happen. Hmm. Well, we want to thank you, Pierre. I think you've been very generous with your time, and I think that's exhausted all of our questions, and, and you've been stuck around to, like, pick, let us pick your brain. And uh, it's been a very, uh, very good insight into... I think everybody's already said it, the way you presented it, right? Because everybody's seen different Max for Live presentations, but you made it approachable, you made it practical, and that was easy to follow. Cool. Yeah, I, I had one, qu one quick question. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I mean, it's a tough subject, and it's, it's really hard to, to make it uh, like interesting, keep it interesting. <laughs> I hope I did. But... No, yeah. I had one last question about Smooth Automator um, and about how you were able to develop that so quickly. It seemed like right as Live 11 was announcing, you had a device right on the spot, ready to kind of flex the new features of it. So were you, did you see that coming from looking at the API? And I guess you were just ahead of the game or? Well, um, I, I, I get the versions a bit earlier, <laughs> I must say. I see. But, but I, see. I think that it's funny because I'm surprised Ableton didn't include it, what I did the device everybody the first as soon as you start playing with the variations you're like okay let's make some smooth uh, yeah. right? and actually the first one that came to my mind is to, to launch a clip and that the clip was, was going to set the variations mm. so uh, that was like obvious to me so the yeah i started working on it very very soon because that was missing and i, I knew it was going to, to be a request Nice. For those of you that are curious, I put the link for uh, Piers Max for Live page, uh, and you can download Smooth Automator there. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's on Gumroad as well, and uh, yeah, I encourage you to it. To, 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 oh. it's, it's a nice addition. I mean, it's, it makes variations much cooler, I, I believe. I hope so. Very much so, yeah. Yeah, I'd be yep. surprised if that didn't get included into Live or if they're not talking about that already somehow or something like that. That's just, it's so cool. Yeah. But it, you know, you know what? Speaking to be a bit technical about it, it's uh, what happens is that when you click on a variation to launch it, all the parameters go to a pos to their position. You know, without the, the device, that's what happens. And uh, what I'm doing with the device is, for a f very, very, very short time, I go to the next variation, then go back to the first one. So. Mm. You, you see, because there's no way I can get the, the values of the next variations w without launching it. So mm. if you, if you use uh, Smooth Automator on the on the push, you can see that the, the buttons go to the next uh, position, then go back to the first one very quickly. Mm. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun using it on sync, I find, like oh, right. syncing the automations. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you, Pierre. That was really good. I'm I'm inspired. Thank you very much. Very nice. Nice thank to you meet you. Thank you so much, man. Meet you guys, and uh, well, hopefully see you in, uh, in Austin sometime. Hopefully, very soon, man. Thank you so much, and we look forward to uh, your future ideas, and we would love to have you back sometime. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, okay. Pierre. Bye, everybody. Bye. If you all want to stick around, we're going to do just a quick, uh, we're going to put everybody's names in the wheel of names, or Tom's already got it set up, and yep. we got some free t-shirts to give away. 
if that means anybody to any, anything to anybody. We Let me add one more name here. here. I dream of the user group where everybody's wearing their black or, or white uh, Ableton t-shirts. All right, let me drag this over and share it. That was really cool. Thanks for sticking around, Richard. I, I knew uh, I thought you were gonna maybe uh, duck out a little early. You guys can see that, right? Of course, I should be working on a project, but I <laughs> I couldn't stop. It was like I was really getting into it. I had live up. I was following them along. All right, oh, Noah. Nice. Noah. I think Noah that. was someone on the uh, Facebook group, right? Yeah, he always yep. uh, joins us on Facebook, so I'll I'll message him. Yeah, cool. Congrats, Noah. Remove him. Um, you want to spin it up one more? Yeah, let's do one more. Edward. Congrats. Uh, just let us know your size information, and uh, we'll get a shirt mailed out to you. I think we already got Edward's information. Oh, oh, he's the guy who got the five shirts. That's right. <laughs> Thought that was a different Edward. Okay. Well, should we spin again then? <laughs> yeah. Let's try that again. Sorry, Edward. We're gonna send you more shirts. <laughs> oh, I think we have to. You wanna call it ship? Edward's undeniable, man. We gotta. We... <laughs> I think he needs he needs the full week's set of t-shirts. All right, Chip. Congrats, man. Um, yeah, let us know what size you wear and we'll get your shirt and your address. All right. Well, thanks again, everybody. Yeah. Um, thanks for joining us again. We really enjoy having our, our regulars over and, uh, Tom, you got anything else to share? No, that's it. I'm trying to stop sharing actually. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, no, uh, we look forward to the next one. Uh, we're working on our summer programming and we'll announce it pretty soon. And, and we've got some cool performance based stuff and, uh, music stuff going on and uh, I hope everybody has an awesome weekend cheers everybody see you next time <laughs>